Right. Uh, Mike. Can you all hear me? I can. Mike Warner present. Lovely. Dan. Here. Re. She is not here. Uh, Naomi. She's here. Uh, Stephanie. Alan. Here. Chad here. Gabe. Here. James. Not present. Alex. Not here. Taylor. Taylor here. Paul. Here. There you are. Lovely. Amazing. So we do have quorum right now. Um, I is anyone opposed to the approval of the agenda? Um, I am opposed to one thing, just adding in the board of trustees for their update. But besides that, I have nothing else. Does anyone else? Okay. I motion we approve the agenda. Second. Is anyone opposed? Wonderful. On to the chair updates, Chad. Uh, I do not have any chair updates, so I'll pass this off to Taylor. Okay, so I do have some updates where I, I just want to make sure that we are starting to brainstorm for our transition for after elections. I think it'd be really cool to have people come on board and just watch what we do, participate. Um, that's really exciting. Then I also want to mention I was at the mayoral debate last night and I thought it was a really cool experience. And unfortunately, our university said that there were not enough students, sorry, not enough spaces, uh, seats available um, for extra students to come. But when I was in there, there were plenty of empty seats. Um, yes, so those are the chair updates. Thank you. On to SACAB with Mike. Y'all can hear me, right? Yep. Hello, everybody. All right. So, um, say cap updates. Um, March third, we are going to do a nice long meeting in say cap from ten to twelve to finalize our bylaws. Um, anyone with any grievances is welcome to attend that meeting. And the goal is to get those shipped off to the area board directors um, that following twenty fifth of March. Secondly, the update on Siggy's Hub. We finally have someone from AHEC who is willing to work with us and. Um, the most immediate thing we're going to try to address in this term is making sure storage and storage for student orgs and um, fraternity story life um, that we're going to try to get that problem solved. That's most recent or most um, what's the term? This be that's the best um, solution we can do currently is for the storage and we're, most likely what we're going to do is um, in terms of student org space, that's going to be a long term um, struggle, but um, I'm here I'm willing to wait out. So that's all I have to say, Cap. Thank you, Mike. On to the budget committee with Mike. Okay, so I don't have my computer in front of me, but um, or I said this is off. If not, I can listen off next week. Um, budget committee passed two packages: one to put um, food in the office. We run out a little food. Um, we put some culturally diverse food in there in that package as well. I'll also put some coffee in the office. And the second one was to get some office supplies. Um, I will send those out uh, once I get to a computer. Wonderful. We will move on to sustainability with Taylor. I don't really have any update for sustainability per se, but I do want to mention that um, my club that deals with sustainability is having a trivia next Wednesday at five o'clock. Let me know if you would like the details. All right, Alex is not here, so OK, on to the Judiciary Committee. But James is not here either. So there is no update. Um, we will now move on to the PR committee with Chad. All right. Uh, PR committee met on Thursday. We um, are focusing a lot of our efforts on uh, assisting elections. Um, <clears throat> Armando has sent out a request from everybody who is not planning on running again to help with the marketing and uh, um, just the communication. Uh, you can send that to him or myself. Uh, I'm trying to make 
make this a big event for everybody for for outgoing and incoming council um and i would really appreciate any help with that thank you chad on to sab with taylor um so today we had the lgbtq resource center come student engagement and wellness and the center for visual arts um there were some very very good presentations especially from our amazing dr barone um the lgbtq resource center they did not request an increase they requested to stay flat student engagement and wellness did increase ask for an increase and so did the center for visual arts um, i also want to mention that i learned in the that the lgbtq resource center for their funding they get <clears throat> over two thirds of their funding for this tri-institutional program comes from MSU Denver, um, which I don't think is really fair, especially because CU Denver uses it about half the time, about the same amount as MSU does. So I don't think that's really fair, but I wanna look into what their process is since I know that they, I don't think they have the same systems that we do with SAB. Um, that is all I have on SAB, thank you. And we will go back a couple items to uh, trustee update Gabe. Awesome. Hello, everybody. So as you all seen, you know, uh, there's a lot of things going on right now with within like the faculty workload um, and the whole situation. I don't have a lot of information on it. Um, I am just also as confused as, as everybody else. Um, and so that's kind of like the update I have right now um, of just like there's just a lot going on there. Not fully sure what's going on, um, but I'm but I'm trying to see what whatever I, I can gather and stuff to hopefully bring next week. Yeah. Thank you, Gabe. On to the policy advisory committee with Ree, but Ree's not here, as well as with the faculty student affairs committee. Um, so we are now going on to the indigenous student resource committee with Naomi and Dan. Oh yeah, Paul needs to be put on that too. Um, yeah, so, uh, so this week I didn't really get to do anything, um, unfortunately, but we do have some resolutions pending right now. Um, and yeah, we get to present the um, student engagement presentation that I have for um, uh, in new business, I do believe. So as far as I know, that's all we have, unless the gentlemen have anything else they'd like to add. Um, Paul, Paul likes to add something. Yeah, I just wanted to add a quick statement on the IR, uh, on the ISRC and um, and where we're going. And, and um, so I wanted to say, as a member of the Indigenous Student Resource Committee, I'm eager to undertake the important work that was outlined in CR 227 that established it. Our first task was to investigate and maintain the ongoing demands of the resolution, which included urging the university to condemn the Supreme Court decision in Oklahoma v. Castro Huerta for its colonialist disregard for the sovereignty of Indigenous nations. Uh, we will continue to work to engage the university in this condemnation and ensure that they join us in this call to action. We haven't stopped. Um, in addition, the IRSC is committed to improving the standard of living for Indigenous peoples, both on and off reservation and trust lands. We demand that services be universally enforced and applied to achieve this goal, not just in the wider community, but also on our campus. North America is our home, and we believe that Indigenous peoples, the original inhabitants of this land, deserve not only to thrive, uh, sorry, deserve to thrive, not merely survive. Uh, you know, we also demand that the university and all support sponsorships or partnerships with public or private operations that damage the environment and threaten the sovereignty of indigenous nations over their, land, over their lands. This is a critical step towards respecting the land and its people and towards ensuring a sustainable future for all. Finally, uh, this committee will work with the university, tribal elders and indigenous community members to determine a relevant set of standards when considering the renaming of major buildings, areas, parks or streets on campus. By promoting the everyday recognition of the genocide and forced displacement of the original inhabitants of this land, we can acknowledge the painful history and work towards a more just and equitable future. And so happy to give that statement. Thank you. Um, on to the open floor announcements. Does anyone have something they would like to add? Paul? OK, Chad, then Paul. Cool. Um, I just want to go back to a conversation that we had at our um, retreat uh, surrounding campus safety. Uh, it's something that I would like to like for us to address collectively, whether it be like a small um, subcommittee. I don't think that the 
public relations committee itself would be able to, to head this up because of how much focus is going to be put on to elections. But with uh, campus safety, we mentioned doing something along the lines of a uh, self-defense class, um, having discussions with AHEC and the administration about better lighting around the campus. Uh, there was a conversation that Taylor has brought up that uh, he's told me came from SACAB last year as far as um, consolidating the buildings that are used after uh, like the sun goes down and for night classes to, to help with some of that herd mentality. Um, I would like I would like for us to address this as our last like final thing. Um, I say final thing, but uh, just before May um, and we can even get in contact with Outdoor Rec and see if they'd be willing to help us sponsor an event because I know that they're willing to work with us. Alan. I'm aware of a professor that teaches the uh, there's a Taekwondo club here and it's I think it's free if not cheap, but I can talk to him about it because I'm sure he wouldn't mind uh, if that's something you'd be interested in. Yeah, so, uh, he's I, like a I don't know what degree black belt, but. Yeah, he was mugged actually going into the parking lot. Somebody must pick the wrong person with him, but uh, right. Um, <laughs> I think we he could, might be interested in that. We could certainly look into that. Uh, one of the things that I am concerned about is that with um, uh, <clears throat> with martial arts, you have to have quite a bit of experience to be able to use that martial art to defend yourself. You're thinking about more self defense, like a exactly clear. more of like a abbreviated self defense course that we could offer to our students. Just food for thought, but uh, I would like for us to continue that discussion. Dr. Brown, did you have something you would like to add? Oh, okay. Okay. It's in response to uh, the self defense class, potentially, Chad. Um, I know uh, our Healthy Pursuits program um, in the Health Center at Auraria has um, hosted uh, self defense type classes. So we might want to, you might, whoever's interested in that might want to reach out to Richard Michio. Um, who is the assistant director for um, health education and awareness. And I know they've done that in the past, so that might be one avenue to pursue. Another one might be Gita. Um, I think Gita has also helped to sponsor that type of thing. So maybe a collaboration or I don't know. Um, and that's something if you needed funding for it, I would be happy to support it through the Center for Equity and Student Achievement. Thank you, Dr. Barone. On to Paul, then me. Hey, uh, I, I really like the idea, uh, Chad, and I wanted to um, propose that I, I was talking to um, some of the folks in the Phoenix Center the other day about uh, collaborating on an event like this and, and, and talked a little bit about our conversation that we'd had, um, because I think we should expand the scope of the type of violence we're looking to address to also include interpersonal violence and domestic violence. Um, and, that, and they're a great resource for that. You know, maybe they can bring that lovely lab. I don't know if any of you have seen that therapy dog they have in there, but he's a sweet, sweet dog. Um, all that aside, I also want to urge that when we talk about safety and, and creating a safe campus, we we try and you know be creative about it because there's a lot of um, there's a lot of things that happen in conversations around campus safety, which are just like trying the same old things that we've done for years and years, right? And I don't think that doing the same thing will necessarily bring about a different result. I would encourage that we look to new ways to innovate in campus safety and what that might look like. I think the self-defense classes and stuff is a, is a way in that direction. But I would kind of, whenever I was talking about campus safety with some of our peers at UCD, first thing that comes out is police. And I know that we got a lot of students that don't feel safe around police. And so I am, you know, I'm inclined to suggest that we try and think outside the box about campus safety here. Um, but uh, that's all I had in regards to what you said, but I'll save the rest of what I had. Taylor. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure it was clear my statement about the mayoral debate that happened yesterday. I thought it was a great event, but I do think it really does not serve students to not let students come. I know there were a lot of people in that audience who do not even live in Denver, but they got to go see the mayoral debate in person. And I really, it frustrates me a lot because there are so many students on this campus who if given the opportunity, they could be involved. Um, yes, Alan. Yeah, I was there too. Uh, the exact same comment. Uh, I agree. I showed up early 
they told me there wasn't enough room, but I I'd registered, but I wasn't on the list, but I volunteered anyway, right there on the spot and helped out. And then, uh, they, there were a lot of empty seats in there. There, you were able to get empty seats all the way up to the third row in the place. If, uh, it was kind of, um, if they could pack it up with students or at least guarantee maybe 25% or something for students, I think there'd be a lot more attendance, especially from the political science department and everything. But uh, what did you think about the debate? Were you impressed? I thought it was very informative. It was so interesting, I enjoyed it. wasn't it? Watching. Mm -hmm. um, yes, Paul. Cool. So this one's more of an update that I was going to bring. Um, I should have mentioned getting CSGC back on the on the agenda, but I neglected to do that at the opening of the meeting. So I wanted to share a few of the ideas that I got from the meeting uh, just this last week. Um, I was asking them about what they do for engagement around elections, and our uh, our peer Federico from Red Rocks Community College told me that they have this thing they call a happy wagon. It's a little red wagon. They fill full of like stuffed animals, you know, fidget toys and candy and all this sweet stuff that people would just love to. Like, you know, it's like I, I told Chad about it and he said it's kind of like the chest at the dentist office. And that's that's basically the idea is something like that, but mobile. And we'd have some flyers and we would connect people um, with the student government in a really positive way. And so think happy wagon when we get moving into the election season and get on the happy wagon. You know, well, I think that'll help us um, get some more engagement. And then um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the there was um, some discussion of um, some some data analysis that they're doing in the Colorado Department of Higher Education. Um, it's to look and assess um, success based on, on on workplace success, return on investment, academic success within the institutions. And they're looking at them like a multitude of variables like um, like age, uh, I believe, um, like whether or not you're full time or part time, if you're disabled or not. And I expressed some concern around the application of like a disability analysis on return on investment and workplace success without some sort of like framework to recognize for the fact that disabled people are incredibly uh, discriminated against in, in the workforce that we're in today. And so they they talked to me about um, wanting to include more uh, disabled voices on, on the work being done. Um, but really, it was just a lot of talk about getting more information on what kind of changes they needed to make. I also I basically echoed data from 2021 that said our university is significantly underfunded when it comes to like state funding compared to our peer institutions. And I kind of raised that data with a question of, you know, will this data bring data driven practices and policy or is this just going to be data on top of data that is not actioned on? I was kind of upfront about it. And so um, I'm going to continue to go to these meetings and put some pressure on, on on our Colorado Department of Higher Education to not just do this research, but then put it into practice and uh, increase our state funding for Metro here. Um, that's really all I have for um, my goals on that. Thank you, Paul. I know Alan had a comment too. I did. It was kind of to connect what we were talking about last night's debate. Um, Dr. Davidson did a really great job uh, for our school represent when she introduced the, the debate. And during that, she said that we have uh, the, the Auraria campus has the highest election participation of any campus in the state of Colorado in the general elections. And that just got me thinking that um, what about our student elections? Why can't we get the same participation in our student elections? Because uh, with 150 some people voting out of 17,000, that's sad. And we should really start thinking about we don't need a committee, I don't think, but just maybe we will in the future. But just think of things in the next week or two as you have time, everyone, and just try to think of ways we can uh, improve student participation because it's kind of weird that uh, a lot of people don't even still know that we're here. Um, and we have to think of ways to um, maybe the PR committee even publicize ourselves, but especially this election far ahead of it. And um, whatever you guys can pitch in would be great. I can I, I'll respond directly to that um, with with me planning on taking on the, the public relations and the communications aspects of of uh, um, the elections that is going to fall under my purview as far as events and there's going to be four events that <clears throat> that we're planning. Um, it feels wrong to to share those events in the event days um, with people who are potentially running again um, in the audience and I feel like it would be an unfair. Um, it would be slightly unfair, but 
it is it is a conversation I've been having, and I'm actually filling out um, event space applications right now. So duly noted, and we're going to try and make it. The goal is at least 500 voters um, for this uh, for this election cycle. OK, were there any other updates? OK, wonderful. On to the advisor updates. Dr. Barone and Armando. Is Dr. Barone there? She wants to go first. Yep, I'm here. Um, so I have a few updates. Um, the first update, since we're talking about elections, um, something I've talked to some of you individually about um, and something I would encourage you all to think about if you are running, that's great. And I um, want to encourage you and empower you to do that. Um, but also think about other peers or other leaders across campus that you can also um, encourage to consider running and sharing your experience um, in TSAC and how that has benefited you professionally and personally, I think would be really helpful in terms of your leadership and um, your growth. Um, and then the other thing, if you're not running, <laughs> um, I also encourage you to consider succession planning and thinking about that as well and thinking about how can you mentor, coach, support um, others to um, learn from you and grow from you and um, encourage them to come to the meetings, encourage them. A lot of you or some of you I remember who attended last year and who were involved and engaged in the process as you were considering running. So I would encourage you to do the same. Send some personal invitations out to folks to get them here um, to think about think about what that could look like and give them a taste of, you know, being a part of the process. So wanted to offer that. The other thing I wanted to talk about was stipends. Um, I keep saying it every week. This week, I think we've resolved most, if not all, of the stipend issues. Um, I've been assured that next, so we talked about um, depositing stipends next week. It's a little bit earlier than the end of the month, but I'm trying to ensure that um, we don't run into the issues we had in January. So I want you all to, um, I'm going to connect with accounting early next week. Um, and my goal is that you all will have your stipends by Friday. If you can please let me know by next Friday if you do not see your stipend in your accounts um, so that I can do some follow up um, with accounting. Um, feel free to send me an email. Um, that would be helpful just so I know and can track that. And then if you do get your stipends, good news is also welcome because <laughs> I get a lot of bad news. So <laughs> any good news, um, I also appreciate not just about stipends, um, but wanted to, to offer that as well. The other thing I wanted to share um, was I talked to Armando and we've been having lots of conversations with a lot of folks. And um, a couple of weeks ago, I had proposed and mentioned um, possibility of doing some kind of communication and conflict or something um, around getting you all some support and facilitated support um, around some of the challenging um, things that y'all have been experiencing in your group and with the dynamics. And so um, I wanted to let you all know, still having those conversations, but March seems like a much better time for um, Elise Crumholes and um, in the Dean of Students office where there's more bandwidth for that. There's just not, hasn't been. Um, so a date or a couple dates I would like to propose are March 17th. It's the Friday before spring break. Um, so I recognize that, but wanted to offer that um, and see if we can get on the calendar to make something like that happen. Um, and I can work with Elise along with Armando and um, Taylor and others to consider like what that could look like, but wanted to pose that date. I also wanted to, regardless of whether we do that or not, I also wanted to um, let you all know that I would like to buy lunch for everyone before spring break. It's been a rough, rough semester <laughs> and for all of us, me included. So I wanted to offer, um, I wanted to just let you all know that either way, I'd like to do some type of community building activity um, and would love for everyone to be there and to participate because I think showing up really matters um, and speaks a lot. So um, hoping folks can plan for something potentially in person that day. And I think that's it. 
Awesome. I just wanted to go over, as you see in the chat, I dropped the PDF of the elections timeline. Um, that is overall what we are working on with the elections team and PR committee, just background and high level um, date information of what's to come. Um, if you take a glance at it, it is very intense. I feel confident right now, comfortable. We are about, you know, we have about a week buffer before things get serious. Um, and then March, uh, end of March, beginning of April, we hit the ground running. So if you have any point of contention with that, please just let me know um, just so we can talk about it. But other than that, I think it's all good. And yeah, we're on talk on everything else. So if you have any questions for us, we're open, but thank y'all. Thank you, advisors. On to the elections update. But if Chad is not here, there is no elections update. OK, yeah, just thank you all for chiming in on the PD for what it means to be a counselor. We did take that recommendation of changing the the statement that had said co-chair elections will be monthly to semesterly. I think that's just feasible for everybody as well. So um, that was only thing that changed. And I know he is finishing up the candidate packets for the elections. Um, they're pretty much done. We just have to transfer them to be virtual. So we're going to do a virtual and hand option. Um, and then the elections code should be completed by next meeting for you all to uh, to review it just so we can get started moving forward. And I think that's pretty much it for elections. If anyone else is not running and they know they are not running, just let me know so we can add you to the PR marketing team for elections. Thank you. All right, um, because we are just three minutes away from our public comment, we're going to move it up slightly. Um, so if you are a member of the public that is here in person, um, please make yourself known to us and we'll give you space. If you are on, uh, on virtual, please put your name in the chat and that you are here for public comment and you will have five minutes to speak to the entire council if you so choose. We can take this time if no one has public comment for a bathroom break. Yep. So we'll we will resume at three o two. So please take your restroom breaks, stretch your legs, whatever you need to do. We have any guest speakers today? Oh, we still have to go through some things. I was going to say. Uh, does anybody need the contact number for the gentleman who was speaking last week? You have your computer up. Does anybody? Chad, you have your computer up, right? Well, this gentleman was speaking last week. Oh, John. Yeah. 
All right, everybody, welcome back. Um, again, if if a individual of the public does show up during our time for public comment until 315, please put your name in the chat and you will take priority over any of the business that we were continuing now. Um, we will start with old business item A. I believe this is Dan's Cora request discussion. Okay. Who wanted to talk about the core request? Mike? Okay. Um, as Mike is not here, I... In the chat. Oh, Mike, are you here? I motion we strike this. Second. I second. Oh. Okay. I'll just withdraw um, this. Okay. Then it is just removed since it has been withdrawn. On to the ISRC presentation. Um, yeah, so uh, the squad and I got together. Um, Paul, Alex, Dan, and I all, um, I, we just collaborate on this. Basically, the idea behind this is that I want to take it to, I'm sorry, we want to take it to um, individual classrooms where professors will give us an allotted time, anywhere from like five to 10 minutes, uh, maybe 15 for questions, to just go and speak to students personally to reach out and create a sense of engagement. Um, so I'm going to present this and please feel free at the end. Please just wait <laughs> until the end um, and then let me know if you guys want to add anything to it. If you guys think that there's like certain rules that interfere with anything, just like let me know. Um, this is just kind of like the rough draft of it. Um, but also, if you guys think it's good as to uh, good as is, um, then um, after we get a budget going for student engagement incentives, we will then proceed to um, talk to different department uh, professors and see when we can go in and speak to their students uh, to create this type of engagement um, with indigenous students. So, yeah, uh, let's get started. So these are our goals. Uh, we want to work with indigenous and BIPOC students to address obstacles to pursue higher education, uh, give support with anything we're able to in spaces they aren't comfortable navigating, provide access to spaces they need they need to feel safe and productive. Um, and we're going to what we offer so far is access to scholarship information, access to TSEC officers in uh, Indigenous Resource Committee for any concern or problem, uh, giveaways, advocacy, and whatever that means for each individual or group, uh, school supplies. Um, and then what we're what we can do for you, um, students, 
obviously, um, <laughs> we are here to serve you. So always know that that's our first um, priority and that to please feel free to reach out with any questions or concerns. We have the ability to make a case and present it to higher ups in education to get a solution going. If it is personal, we will always keep it confidential. Um, the next. And then these are our contact information. So SGT SAC office in Tivoli third floor to the right of the CMA office is where the main office is located. Um, you can ask for uh, myself, Naomi, Dan, Paul, Nelson, or sorry, Dan, Paul, or Alex. Um, and then these are all of our um, emails. So whenever they need to get a hold of us to ask any questions, we can go ahead and offer that to them. And uh, yeah, so quick note though, we did put giveaways in there and that's part of the package that we still need to develop in asking for funds to create an incentive, um, an engagement incentive package for these students. So that way we have something to offer whenever they fill out surveys or if we, um, you know, just any type of engagement, we want to, we want to <laughs> incentivize them to engage with us. So we're trying to like provide um, cause and effect kind of situation with that. So yeah, does anybody have any input or anything like that? Um, were there any specific projects you wanted to outline that um, the, sorry, the ISRC has done in the past? No, so this will be our first one other than, you know, obviously our resolutions, um, but this will be like the first one and this is so we can develop those projects. Um, we don't want to really create um, events more or less because we understand how busy students can be, but we want them to understand that they can come to us if they need an event or if they need um, like we just want to figure out what they need is like the biggest part here. So we don't even really know necessarily what kind of events to hold because we don't know what's going to get those students to come like what's prioritized for them. So that's um, where we're at. We want to figure that out first and then we can work on creating more events. Also why I want to run next semester as well, because this will be like the building blocks um, to be able to provide more of those events that are going to cater to those students need rather than just like throwing events all willy nilly and then you're getting like four students to show up. So um, yeah, that's kind of the idea behind it. I wanted to say that um, just from, from my perspective on the committee, I think that like um, we don't have a long history from which we can draw from like projects. And so this is this is us trying to get into the um, the investigation stage of, you know, where where can our advocacy work best? And we do have some things outlined in some of our goals and in and, and the resolution that created the committee that um, we're going to go out and, 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 and put into practice. And we're going to reflect on the, the effects of that practice, figure out if uh, we need to make any sort of adjustments for next year. See what works, keep it, see what doesn't pitch it and, uh, and and provide a, a better uh, advocacy for these students. Um, yeah, and to chime in on that, like I'm planning to with each uh, engagement activity that we do, I want to provide a survey to students to see, you know, obviously like I want I want their criticism. I want them to tell us what we did right, what we did wrong. How can we do better? Um, what would you like to be seen more of, you know, kind of situation? So I we this is like he said, this is that uh, data collecting um, stage of this committee because we weren't able to be so active last semester. So um, this is like the building blocks that way whenever hopefully we can get someone to take over the committee next um, semester as well uh, and you know the following to make sure that like this is something that continues and builds and provides for these individuals. Um, like I said not just uh, indigenous but also BIPOC as well. Can you hear me? OK, um, something that I would encourage your committee to do is to do some research around what resources are available that regarding. Things that students might report that might come up, whether that's um, incidents around discrimination and bias, like the EO office um, and a point of contact there, um, who they can reach out to or a website or something like that. The Center for Equity and Student Achievement, we have lots of identity based centers and programs that really focus on specific identities from first gen to low income disabilities to LGBTQ plus issues or you know what I mean? Like having a list of resources, I think because if stuff comes up for folks and you don't have like a something to give them or somewhere a warm referral to hand them off to, I think could um, it, it could just be hard for you all to navigate that. So I would encourage you to promote the current resources that are in place too, 
um, and to consider those warm handoffs um, here on campus, or it might be Rowdy's Corner, or do you know what I mean? Like things like that. Uh, yeah, so um, to comment on that, we actually, so I want, uh, we're going to be partnering up with Desiree Richards as well, um, just to kind of get, uh, obviously she has um, a higher position, so she knows more about things and is able to advocate for students better. Um, so we were just hoping maybe we can collaborate and get like a, a, a huge resource page started so that way we can like advertise that whenever they come to the office. Um, and then we also wanted to possibly include it, like a link to it on the presentation as well. Um, and then I have a bunch of uh, information and resources as it is because I've navigated this school very well as a senior. <laughs> um, so I have a lot of scholarship opportunities I'd like to present to students, um, especially in STEM, um, but it would be nice to get them from other departments as well. But I do believe we brought that up to student, was it student faculty affairs, right? Where we went and talked to everybody and we were like, hey, from each department, we'd like a list of resources for students kind of situation from each department. Didn't we bring that up as student faculty affairs? No, was that on it? Okay, well, listen, we need to do that one too. So anyway, um, <laughs> uh, so that's something that we have. Um, and then also um, just referring them to places like you were saying as well. Um, and can you actually tell me that one resource you just mentioned? You got it? Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Dr. Brown. All right, um, we will move on to new business item A. Uh, Gabe, the floor is yours. Awesome. Thank you. Hello, everybody. It's me. Cool. So uh, my resolution, uh, as a quick little thing, it, it pertains to what Mike Ramsey came in uh, last week and presented about um, the Fair Housing event. And so here we go. Uh, we, the student government, uh, chose helping our students facing housing insecurities as one of our goals for the semester. Thus, through the Fair Housing event, we will be one step closer to achieving that goal and providing much needed knowledge to the MSU Denver community and beyond on housing rights. Whereas we as a council decided that housing insecurity was one of our goals for the semester during our initial retreat. Whereas housing security is an issue not just affecting MSU Denver students, but the community at large. Whereas it is important for the community and students to know about their fair housing rights, especially with intersectionality of other identities such as race, ability, etc. Therefore, here be I, there, therefore be it hereby further resolved. So many words. SUTSAC will be the official university partner for this event, which is a half-day seminar on fair housing rights and housing is issues like racial home ownership gap disability rights and housing, et cetera. And Mercedes Maestas from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development um, will be the keynote speaker. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, the event will take place on April 25th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., locations to be determined. Therefore, be it hereby hereby further resolved, SGTSA counselors are expected to participate and be present at the event since, it's, since it is a TSAC event and its planning stages, which more information and sign-up sheets will come soon. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, SGTSAC will provide $4,000 for the event to help cover booking expenses and food as the main contributor and campus partner. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, the Public Relations Committee and the Council at Large will help with the promotion of the event. Cool. Any questions, comments, or anything? Okay, let's open up the floor to discussion. Who has anything? Okay, we have Paul and then me. As a member of the student council and a representative of the student body, I fully support this resolution to be the official university par partner for the fair housing event. I believe housing is a, uh, housing insecurity is a serious issue that affects not only our fellow students, but also the broader campus community, as Gabe had said in the resolution. By collaborating with the organizers of this event and sponsoring it, we can help raise awareness of fair housing rights and provide crucial information to those who need it most. I encourage all counselors to participate in the planning and attendance of this event, and I look forward to its success. Thank you, Paul. On to me, then Mike, then Naomi, then Alan. Um, so Gabe, I really love this resolution, but I have a question for you. What would you say to someone who says that $4,000 is too much to spend on this event? Awesome. Thank you. Wait, can I respond or do I have to like wait for the stack? Yeah, you can respond. Okay, awesome. Um, I would say that one, yes, no, 4,000 seems like a big number, right? But one, this would make us as one like first official campus partner for this event. Um, and so I think contributing 
that amount because we're just official par- campus partner makes sense. Also, you know, what have we done when it when it comes to like students and stuff? Um, like when it comes to regards to what actions have we taken to really like support our students, um, especially in like this recent semester when a lot of when I feel like a lot of our meetings have just been arguments and stuff. Um, I think that the four thousand dollars really is like the least that, that we could do um, to put on a big event right now like this that really helps our students and the community. Um, and yeah, that's what I would say. It like, I feel like we this would just add on to that list of actions that we're doing, um, which is not as big, I feel like, as it could be. Um, but that's why I say it. 4,000, yeah. Okay, thank you, Gabe. I appreciate you. On to Mike, then Naomi, then Alan. So um, just a quick, like some advice, um, because we're becoming an official sponsor of this, um, our rate to per, so wherever lounge you guys use and typically wherever kind of place you use, um, because we are part of MCU, our, our rate will be significantly like less so than like an outside partner partnering or uh, purchasing that space. So my suggestion would be like, because we're the main um, sponsors, it, we, the, the rate would be lower if we were the ones who booked the event as well. Um, but that's all I had, just a comment to make. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. On to Naomi, then Alan. I think that we should definitely support this because this is doing exactly what TSEC is supposed to be doing, which is like support the students and do by or do right by them. So I think that this is a very, um, you know, this is a very tough subject. There's a lot of students on campus who are homeless. And like, I can really resonate and empathize with that very deeply because I have experienced something um, along those lines. And couch surfing isn't fun. Living in your car isn't fun. Um, just not having a place to call home isn't fun. And it really um, can create a lot of depression and anxiety for students, which makes it that much harder to be successful um, in their educational careers. And this is something that we really need to advocate for here on campus. And regardless if that's too much money or not, like we have a good budget, we will be fine. Like, I think this is something that needs to be prioritized. So I vote that like we should definitely, I'm sorry, not vote. I am on the side of which voting yes for this, because this is a very significant issue here on campus and it shouldn't even be an issue, but this is a good step towards resolving it. All right, uh, Alan, go ahead. I'm in full support of this. I'm not aware of any counselor who isn't. And so uh, I would like to motion to vote on it if uh, anybody's willing to second that right now. I'll second that. It, um, the motion on the floor is to call the question that has been seconded. We will go counterclockwise as we have been doing recently. Um, we'll go with uh, Dan. Yes. Chad, yes. Taylor? Taylor, yes. Naomi? Yes. Paul? Yes. And then uh, let me get the list of participants real quick. Um, Mike? Yes. Stephanie? Wonderful. And then Gabe. Yes. Awesome. Did I miss somebody? No. Awesome. Cool. Well, it passes by unanimous decision. Awesome. Okay, Thank Gabe. you all. Gabe, are you going to be in contact with um, Mike? Wait. Yep, I am. Cool. Thank you. Amazing. On to the Request for sustainability info, Paul. Thank you, Taylor. Um, all right. And so this is a request for a summary of university efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions at MSU Denver. And just to kind of detail the reason why I wrote this, I think that we have a bit of a limited capacity when it comes to where we can, you know, conduct advocacy. You know, our budget's only so big. We only have so many people. And so I think it's it's crucial we understand the situation and the, the lay of the land. And so we can apply um, our advocacy in the critical situations where it could be most effective. So with that in mind, here it goes. As you know, reducing greenhouse gas emissions is a critical global challenge that requires the cooperation and commitment of all sectors, including universities. MSU Denver has a responsibility to lead by example 
and play its part in mitigating the impacts of climate change. In light of this, I would like to formally request the student government obtain from the university administration a copy of the university's efforts to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions. This summary should include, one, an overview of the university's current use and emissions profile, including data on emissions from building operations, transportation, and other sources. Two, information on the university's efforts to reduce energy consumption, including retrofits, upgrades, and energy efficient measures. Three, data on the university's progress towards reducing emissions, including any targets, goals, or benchmarks, and how they align with the state, national, and international commitments. Four, overview of the university's plans for transitioning to renewable energy sources and reducing dependence on fossil fuels. Five, feedback from students, faculty, staff, and other stakeholders at the university's, uh, on the university's efforts to reduce emissions, as well as suggestions for improvement. I believe that this information will provide valuable insights to the university's efforts to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions and help us identify areas where we can make a positive impact. I also believe that as, a student, as student advocacy counselors, we have a unique opportunity to champion that cause of sustainability and help create a more environment, environmentally responsible campus community. Thank you all for your attention on this important matter. I look forward to your prompt response here. Um, well, this is essentially the letter, so I'm, I'm reading the letter, sorry. Um, sincerely, the student government, but that's what it says. Okay, let's open it up for discussion. Who has thoughts? Paul, Dan, then me. As a member of the Student Advocacy Council, I strongly support this resolution requesting a summary of the university's efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Climate change is a critical issue that affects us all, and we have a responsibility as members of this community to take action and reduce our environmental impact. Um, part of this reiterates a little bit of what was just said there, but I'll say that I encourage all of you to support this resolution and to work together to create a more sustainable and environmentally responsible campus community. Thanks. Dan? Yeah, um, I like the idea, Paul. Um, who, who, is there one specific office or that we could send this to that we can actually get a response on these things, or is this something that's going to have to be pulled together from like AHEC, or or is it just the MSU buildings, or specifically the university or the I campus? Can that. Yeah, yeah, I would. Um, I, I shot this by Taylor, get his thoughts on it, and um, suggested we was it who was it? You said CFO. Um, yeah, the new CFO, Jim Carpenter, I think he would be a good person to reach out to. Also, ASCP, they know a lot about MSU sustainability since we don't have a single person dedicated to sustainability working at MSU. Both those sound fine to me. Okay, cool. Okay, on to me. Um, I'm in full support of this, but I do want to mention that anyone on this council can at any time request info from someone on campus, and they can request to have them come to our meeting and speak on it as well. Just a thought that I wanted to bring up. On to Naomi. Um, I think that I love this letter. I'm full support of it, but I agree with Taylor. I think that we should have, we should reach out to someone and have them come talk about this um, before we submit it, just because maybe we don't even have to submit it. Maybe like it's just right there already and we just have to have them bring the stats in for us. And then we can maybe even develop like a plan from it right then and there um, that we can contribute to. So I feel like just because it might be an extra step instead of just like having someone come tell us and then bam, it's all right there for us. I, I like the idea of having someone come and speak to it, but I also as a as like a data guy, I want to have like a written thing. So Parmi says, Porcain, uh, what was it? Porcain no right? Like why not, why not both? Um, probably said that wrong, but um, we should send this out, I think, and then um, encourage just in the email maybe that that they um, they could they're welcome to come present that information as well as provide it um, by email if they can. What do you think to that? Oh, cool. Okay. Is there any other discussion on this resolution? I vote to, or a motion to vote on it. Pass it. Really? That thing? Yeah. Seconded. Okay, let's begin our voting. All right. Um, yeah. Okay, Dan. Yes. Chad. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Naomi. Yes. Paul. Yes. Mike. 
Um, Stephanie? Yes. Gabe? Yes. Okay, that is everyone. The motion has passed. On to the next order of business, the resolution on parliamentary order, Paul. Thank you. Yeah, I got a lot today, I, I know. So. <laughs> um, all right, so here's on the resolution to condemn violations of parliamentary order on la last Friday's council meeting, and it goes like this. Uh, whereas MSU Denver student government operates under a set of rules and procedures established by parliamentary procedure, which are essential to the efficient and effective functioning of the organization. Whereas it has come to the attention of the student government that during last Friday's council meeting, there were violations of these rules and procedures leading to disruptions and displays in the conduct of business. And whereas these violations of parliamentary order are harmful to the integrity and credibility of our student government and undermine the ability of the organization to effectively represent and serve the student body. Now, therefore, be it further resolved that the MSU Denver student government formally condemns the violations of parliamentary order that occurred during last Friday's meeting. Uh, this resolution serves as a strong statement of the student government's commitment to the proper functioning of the organization and to the protection of its integrity and credibility. The student government will continue to take appropriate actions to address violations of parliamentary order in order to promote the efficient and effective functioning of the organization and to maintain its credibility and integrity. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. We're going to open up to discussion now. First, we have Naomi, um, then me. Um, point of clarification, um, what exactly are you referring to from the incidents um, that was uh, disrupting or what you were referring to? Sure. The specific instance that made me want to write this resolution was when um, the floor wasn't seated by the chair and it was just simply taken by different members that wanted to talk. Thank you. Um, it'll be me, then Stephanie. Um, well, I appreciate the intentions behind this resolution. I do think it's kind of redundant. I think it would make more sense to just say, make a general comment. I don't think we should be doing resolutions on this type of thing. Thank you. On to Stephanie. We're just going to say the same thing. I feel like it would just be sitting again in our SharePoint and there wouldn't really be any like further action that would be needed after this. It's kind of just like a general statement unless it were brought up, <clears throat> excuse me, with the uh, accountability structure that we have in place as of right now. Um, but I don't really see the need to kind of vote on this. I, I appreciate the intention behind it, but I just don't think it's necessary to kind of vote. I think it's just a general statement to make. You can give your response, then it'll be Alan and Naomi. The stack, then Alan, then Naomi, then Paul. Um, I agree with the spirit of this. However, uh, I think based on what Dr. Barone was saying earlier about us getting together for um, with um, Elise from the um, dean's office and all of us uh, getting together for a luncheon and uh, doing this through the conflict resolution there, I just think it's all in the same spirit of everything and it might be better just to at least table this until after that because I think it's probably a more appropriate way to settle all these things and differences that we've had in the past because I'm all for that. I'm tired of, you know, all the squabbling and all this stuff. I'm tired. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Thank you. Um, Naomi, then Paul. Yeah, I, I think I agree. I think the intentions are really good here. Um, it's just that I don't think that I think if we can just all agree to be adults from now on and respect each other's um, boundaries and to not interrupt when we're not supposed to and things like that we should be good um because i feel like i agree that was like the the biggest things there was just a lot of interruptions um and yeah if we can just all agree to do that we're good and also agree with alan like we are going to have that communications um skill retreat so i think that that'll be um where we learn you know um to better communicate our emotions in those types of situations um, so maybe after that, if then uh, we are failing to do so at that point, then we can do something like vote on this to put something in place. But that would then involve the Judiciary Committee, I do believe, to be holding us accountable. Um, so I think for right now, it's not something that needs to be voted on as long as we are holding ourselves accountable from this point forward. 
Thank you, Naomi. Then we have Paul, then Stephanie. So I want to speak to why I wrote this. Um, I think last Friday, our council just totally threw parliamentary order out the window, right? And what, 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 ended, what we ended up with was a very confusing meeting and honestly a bit of an embarrassing one. We had all these guests. We had a dean sitting in and we looked foolish, right? There was a, a moment where many people were disrespected, just totally cut off when they were in the middle of talking. And not only is the person disrespected, but the work, the advocacy, what we're here to do, like our roles as student advocacy counselors, is that mission becomes uh, sidetracked by a person who decides, hey, you know what's more important than that goal and the democratic functioning of this body is what I have to say right now, right? We're not, this is a democracy. This is a collective body. We don't operate in here as, you know, uh, might, rule by might, you know, might is right, right? That's not how it works in here. And I think that in the absence of taking parliamentary uh, order, parliamentary order seriously, what we're left with is what happened last Friday. And so I think there needs to be action done to address it positively. We can't just kick this ice cube under the fridge and hope it melts. Because in reality, I fear that it's going to happen again if we don't take it seriously. And this bill, I mean, this resolution, bill resolution, whatever, this statement, and because it's really what it is, is just outlining that it's, we condemn what happened last Friday for what it was. And we think that in the future, we want to make sure that we protect the integrity of this body from preventing that from happening again. This doesn't really outline a ton of actions. It doesn't say, hey, I got a new part of the Judiciary Committee where we'll have a particular set of the things that happen. All this is saying is that what happened last Friday was a big problem. We need to take it seriously um, and we're going to take it seriously into the future. And so I just wanted to encourage some some reconsideration on some of the positions here. I appreciate everyone liking the intentions. Um, I just I'm a little cynical that it's going to happen again if we don't really make a statement about this and unite around having some order and respect around who has the floor, when they have it, you know, um, et cetera. Because otherwise we'll just fall into who knows what. It'll be a circus. Thank you, Paul. We now have Stephanie, then Chad, Alan, and then Naomi. No, I definitely agree with you. Um, I, I feel I would have wanted more action in this, and that's why I kind of feel a it's more just a general statement, and that's kind of what I'm more comfortable with just leaving it as, as a general statement. Um, what I would propose, I don't know if, I don't think it's like a friendly member or whatever. What, what I would propose is that we do bring it up with the judici judiciary or our accountability system, whatever we have. Um, because I do fear that it would happen again. And I've seen that happen multiple times. It's not the first time. It's not the last time it'll happen. Um, that's why I feel like this resolution in of itself is kind of just, it is just a statement. And I would rather see some more action because um, when we do have really important people here trying to listen to what we're doing, and then we break out into interruptions or disrespectful behavior, it does look embarrassing. Um, so what I would propose instead is we do bring up the judiciary, whatever accountability structure, and we do something um, to prevent that from happening again. Um, and that way people are being held accountable for their actions. Um, just because I do feel that this is just a general statement, which is good. I love a good general statement. Um, but without any kind of action, again, we can promise that we're not going to do it again all we want, but that's just words and words are only words. So that's kind of where I still stand. I think I didn't know with a quick little direct response. I appreciate your stance and I agree with you. I, where I, where the little disunity exists is I, I just, I believe that, you know, good action is preceded by a good statement. You know, we got to talk about what we're going to do before we do it. Um, and so I think that we should do what you're describing. You know, um, I, I should have invited you to the collaboration on this, on this document, to be honest, because um, we could have had that in there by now. But um, so that being said, um, I'd be happy to work with you on something more serious in the future. But I, you know, I don't think it's, um, we don't necessarily have to pick between making statements and taking actions. We can do both and making a statement is taking an action, even if it's just a minor one to recognize what's going on. Thank you. On to Chad, then Alan, Naomi, then Taylor. Um, I, I do agree that this, this statement is more for us. And I feel like the statement has been made. It has been heard. I don't know that it needs to be a resolution that would then, like as Stephanie said, would just sit in our SharePoint um, and collect dust. I don't. I don't think this is really in what I would consider um, 
information that the public would need. If we are embarrassed about how our our uh, meeting functioned in front of our guests, then I would propose that we write a letter to our guests, pretty much stating the same sentiment that is shared here and apologize to them. And we can collectively tell ourselves that we will be better. Because even if we do bring this up with the Judiciary Committee, there is nothing that's going to like stop us from doing it again, as we've just talked about. And we're, we're just creating more work for more counselors. Thank you, Chad. On to Alan, Naomi, then Taylor. Um, yeah, once again, I'm just, uh, I don't have any disagreement with anything any of you guys are saying. It all kind of goes into the same ball of wax. Uh, I'm just begging that we maybe, I don't see the big hurry if we were going to do this. You could only improve it. I even agree with you, Paul, as far as it needs to be done or something needs to be done between us all to control the order in the meetings. Um, I would beg you guys, I don't have voting power, but I'd beg you to, like I said, put it forward till at least March 17th when Dr. Barone's working with everybody to get us together. And I think we can figure it out. And then from that point, if it needs to be more serious, then you can do so, Paul. Thank you. On to Naomi, Taylor, then Paul. So there's... I'm seeing both sides of this. And then from my perspective as an indigenous person, like we do have like um, almost like a trust kind of thing. So it's like your word is law. Like what you say is what you do and what you mean. So do it. Um, so in a sense, I can see passing this um, just because, I mean, it wouldn't hurt to just have it there and to also see that like we live by our word, you know what I mean? But then Stephanie is also right. Like there is that part of us that we're not going to live by a word because we do get emotionally overwhelmed. We are going to say things that we don't mean out of context and we aren't going to follow the rules. We are human and I see that as happening. But I also do want to put faith in our abilities as a council and as individuals that we can just say that we're going to do it and then vote on it. So people see that we say that we're going to do something and then we follow through on that for the rest of our meeting. So I feel like this is one, a good opportunity to say what we mean and mean what we say and then do what we mean. Um, so I, I see that side of it as well. But then also like I can be on the same side as like maybe just put this off till next week and maybe just put like some actions in there and partner up with the Judiciary Committee to see that like this is what we need to be held accountable for. And if we don't do that, then these are going to be the consequences. Um, and they can be like minor consequences like you don't have voting rights for the next meeting or two or whatever. Um, but just to show that like we are willing to hold ourselves accountable with actual consequences because um, like I said, I just, I see both sides of it. So I get if we don't vote on this, but at the same time, um, maybe we should be that council that um, says something and then follows through on it without having to be treated like children and given ourselves consequences in writing. Thank you. On to me, Paul, Mike, then Alan. Um, so I want to emphasize again that how I see this is a, violu a violation of our group norms, our unspoken group norms, since we haven't really ever come together and built those. I think it would have been really cool if we did that at the beginning of our tenure on this, on this council, establishing group norms with Elise Krumholtz. Maybe that's something we can look into for next the next council to do that in August. Um, yeah, but I think it's it's just something it happens. We're all human group norms. It's I don't think it's not going to happen again, even if we write something. Um, those are my thoughts, and I, I think it's OK if it does happen again. It's but it is a little embarrassing. On to Paul, Mike, then Alan. So I uh, just wanted to reiterate this is a this would this would be a statement where we would all agree in, if we were to pass it, it would be the agreement that what happened last Friday was unacceptable and that it, it, it needs to be taken seriously going into the future. It's the agreement that our role here as student advocacy counselors is an important one. This isn't just a paycheck we can cut. This isn't just a fun little experiment where we can like, you know, see what it's like to be a student government person. Like we have we have thousands of students we're representing. Like, like if people don't want to take this seriously, there are some students that would happily take your place. And so I would encourage everybody to really think about passing this because this is a simple, simple ask. 
if we can't simply agree that what happened last Friday is unacceptable, right? Um, you know, how in the world are we supposed to trust each other to hold this, like hold each other accountable? If we can't even agree that what happened last Friday was unacceptable. Um, I don't support kicking this can down the road because this is, this would do so little for students. I wanted to get this out of the way, right? I wanted us to all agree. I thought this would pass a lot easier, really. I thought that I'd get this out here and we'd all be like, yeah, you know, what happened last Friday was, was whack. It wasn't just embarrassing. It, it really threw a wrench in the gears of the work, right? We had to cut some of the items out of the, the agenda. And this, like the parliamentary uh, rules of order could easily be abused to force somebody's resolution off the agenda. And I fear that someone may have already tried to do that, right? Like, how do I know that the people who abused uh, staff last time weren't doing it to specifically remove an item off the agenda? Who's to say? But we need to take this seriously. This isn't just me being overly formalistic. This is me saying that, like, the way these meetings run, the way these meetings run is important for our functioning, right? Um, and we need to take it seriously. I, 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 I would, I would say that if we don't pass this, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sad for the state of our uh, the functioning of our meetings, and, um, and I'll also say that you know this really isn't some. I don't expect this to be a magical barrier to prevent any instance of violation in the future. This is just all us saying, hey, you know this, this can't continue. We need to take this seriously. It's nothing more than that. You Paul on to Mike, Allen, then Naomi. You can hear me, right? So we can hear you, kind of. You're kind of quiet. Um, sorry, is that better? Yes. All right, perfect. So. Um, I do support this resolution, um, but I do support more in the lines of Chad. Like, if we are going to pass this, we should, I think, for and foremost, write an apology to our guests and the dean who had to witness that. I do think, Paul, it's a little unfair that you're characterizing. I think this has wide support in very di different stages, but I don't think it has, like, opposition anyway. The way you characterize it seemed like, oh, this isn't going to pass. I think that's a little unfair for you to say. I mean, I think there's some valid opinions here, and I think... Um, I would want to see this be more as an apology letter to our guests um, who sat through kind of that kind of circus show that was last week. So um, that's what I'd like to see this kind of turn in further more to. Thank you, Mike. On to Alan and Naomi. Hello, Mike. Uh, yeah, I do. I don't think there's any disagreement with anything anybody said here. Um, I don't think like whether we do it today or not, it's not about it's not passing. I think we can always pass it. It's just um, to be in a hurry. We can make it better. I agree with sending out apology letters, but uh, I would like to especially re reiterate the fact that it's, you know we can always pass it. We can still pass it. It doesn't have to be passed today, and I think it'll be better whatever we decide to pass in the future. It would be nice if I could vote in the future. Um, I would like to make a motion that we and, and this is based on what Dr. Burke. Oh, ah, um, Dr. Barone talking about a community community building retreat. I think that will have a heavy influence on how we decide to do this. And I'd like to at least make a motion that we vote on this right now to forward it. It's not about not passing it. I think everybody agrees it could be done and we can do it in a good way. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we vote to forward it to at least after our community building lunch where we can decide the proper course of action. And I'd like to motion to vote on that right now to forward this to March 17th, which is only a few couple weeks away. Um, table it until March 17th okay. and we can vote on it after. I second that. Okay, we're going to go into our vote now. Can we discuss that motion? Yes, we can discuss that motion. Um, we'll discuss for 10 minutes. That's um, Naomi, Paul, did you want to discuss? Naomi, then Paul. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to rephrase this so it goes around the motion and not the resolution. Um, uh, never mind, I withdraw. Thank you, Onda Paul. I do not think that this this ask that we abide by parliamentary procedure is so major that we would need to kick it down the road a whole couple months. Come on, guys. This is just saying, hey, let's all follow the rules we've said a few times. It's already in our bylaws. 
It's already in our first resolution we passed. It was in another resolution we passed. We've already said it many, many times before, right? This is just saying it again because the first time we said it clearly didn't take effect, right? Because this stuff happened. So, like, I I would hate to see the public watch us kick this this statement down the road for it to pass then and do what? But is that when we're going to start taking parliamentary procedure seriously? I don't know. Thank you. On to Naomi, then, uh, sorry, Mike, then Naomi. Oh, I'd like to see if you'd make, suggest a friendly amendment and add that we write a letter to our guests, apology letter to our guests that were there at the last meeting. If you, I want to see if you add that in this resolution. I don't have a strong feeling on that either way, but I'd be happy to include it. Yeah, so then I'd, I'd motion as a friendly amendment motion that uh, it wouldn't take much rewriting, but we'd add this as an apology letter um, uh, to our guests with their last meeting. We sent it out. Could I suggest that we phrase that to be worded? Would one of our wonderful chairs be willing to write a short apology letter? I can help. There is a motion on the floor to add an apology letter to this resolution. Does it receive a second? Was it a friendly amendment? It was a friendly amendment. Yeah. yeah. OK, and I just wanted to kind of clarify the wording of it, because as of right now, it's just a letter. I feel like some people might want to know who's writing the letter. And if we just say it's the chair, there's our point of contact. When are you willing to do that? I'm willing to do it, but it... I can take it. OK, very cool. We are continuing discussion with tabling this resolution until what was the date, Alan? On March to 17th till we go with Dr. Barone in the um, excellent Dean's is, office community building. Is there any more discussion on that motion to table? Yes. More discussion from Paul? What, yeah. Say yes? oh, yeah, I was, Naomi, I was sorry. So um, I think that that's not going to look, I agree with Paul, it's not going to look good on us if we just table the discussion for this till March 17th, because that's running like literally a month out. And that's just kind of prolonging the effects of what happened. So I think that it, we should just, um, I'd like to motion to keep the discussion going um, for like maybe five minutes and then vote on it. Uh, yeah, like so I motion to end the discussion to tabling it and then to continue it um, for five more minutes and then vote on it, vote on the resolution. So we will have to vote on the tabling section. So we are going to finish discussion on that, then vote on the tabling, and then we will resume discussion of this. Is there anybody else that would like to be added to the stack on discussion of tabling? Alan. Um, I don't think this is a win loss type of thing. It's just for a little patient. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, and it gives us a chance to do all the things you're talking about, add the amendments and do all that. We don't have to vote on it today and I'm willing to change the date, even if you want to wait till next week to make it better. But I just think we could table this for right now and move on and nobody's winning or losing here to give it a chance to for us all to do the right thing. That's what this motion's about in my mind. I'd like to table it till March 17th, but I'm also flexible on the date. I, we're going to go to Paul and then we are ending discussion. How much time do we have left? A few seconds. We okay. have 30 seconds. OK, well, I have a quick thing. I urge us to vote no on this tabling motion. Kicking this can that far down the road is an embarrassing look. We shouldn't do it. OK, thank you for that. Um, so now we're going to vote on the motion to table this until next week. Um, Dan. Yes. Chad. No. Taylor, abstain. Stephanie. No. Naomi. No. Paul. No. Mike. Soft no. Okay. Gabe. No. Okay. The motion has failed. We will not be tabling this until no. next week. Thank you, Mike.
OK, so are we can we're still talking about this motion? Um, yes, Naomi. OK, so to kind of um, add into the whole conversation and I do agree with Paul, but like also for us, how does this look if we pass this? And obviously it's inevitable that we're going to like, you know, and it's going to end up happening again um, and then we don't honor it. So then it's on our SharePoint. People see that like, oh, they say they're going to do this. And then obviously they don't own up to their word. So then um, like we obviously we're going to prove to students that we didn't take it seriously. So it's going to look really bad on us that we say this and then we don't follow through on it. We completely agree with the resolution. But I think what this comes down to is like I would I want to make a friendly amendment that you add in some obviously the letter an apology letter that we do have to write an apology letter and then second like some suggested consequences if we go through and do this again because yes this is a statement i do completely agree that is great but ultimately we're everyone's agreed it's going to happen again it's going to happen again and we're going to look like fools to the students if we put this in there say that we're going to do it and then we don't so we need to provide consequences for the council if we do this uh, if um we don't follow through on what we agree on here today. So I make a friendly amendment to um, table this to be presented till next week. So then you can add in the consequences um, if we do not abide by um, this behavior. So. No, no, no I'm, <laughs> I'm asking you to make a friendly amendment and until you make that friendly amendment, we table this till next week. OK, so. All right, so I make a friendly amendment that you add consequences to this. OK, then I motion I, to table this until that happens. I'm I'm sorry. I would not accept this as a friendly amendment simply because I want that that action thing. If we are to make this a more actionable piece to be a separate thing that we develop with Stephanie, because I know she had some good ideas we were just talking about. Um, and they can be two separate things like we don't like not every enough personal privilege. Can we continue with the stack, please? I was responding to the friendly amendment request. OK, so that's a perfectly. Like. Fine thing to do. Um, so no. OK. That's done um, on to Stephanie. I called a question. Second. OK, we get to begin voting now. OK. Dan. Okay, we're voting on this, right? So we're voting on the passage of this in addition to a friendly amendment was made to send a, a an apology letter to the guests of our last meeting. Yes. Chad? Yes. Taylor? No. Stephanie? Yes. Naomi? Dane? Paul? Yes. Mike? Yes. Gabe? Okay, it has passed. Amazing. Um, Real quick, we'll talk next steps. Um, I will work with Taylor and Paul to craft this letter to our guests, and we will go through the uh, meeting recording to ensure that every guest that was there um, receives this letter. Excellent. Thank you. Um, on to the... <coughs> Okay, on to the resolution on 24 hour requirements. Paul. Thank you, sorry, I was having a little sidetrack. Um, this is for the 24 hour. All Correct. Right. Thank you. Sorry for the uh, distraction. All right. Uh, all right. So this is uh, amending the bylaws to allow for resolutions to be brought to the council table in the moment, is what it's called. Um, Whereas the current bylaws of the MSU Denver Student Government, the Student Advocacy Council, limit the items that can be discussed at council meetings to those submitted 24 hours ahead of time. Whereas this limitation restricts the ability of council members to respond in a timely manner to urgent issues that arise within the student body. Whereas it is the duty of the MSU Denver Student Government, the Student Advocacy Council, to represent and advocate for the best interests of the student body. Whereas allowing for resolutions to be brought to the council table in the moment would increase the council's ability to respond in a timely and effective manner to urgent issues facing the student body. Therefore, be resolved, the MSU Denver Student Government, the Student Advocacy Council, will amend its bylaws to allow for resolutions to be brought to the council table in the moment 
without the 24 hour submission requirement. Be it, here, it be it further resolved that while this change is implemented, the Student Advocacy Council recommends that resolutions be sent in, in as soon as possible to ensure that the council has adequate time to review and prepare for the discussion. Be it further resolved that the MSU Denver Student Government Student Advocacy Council works to ensure that this amendment is communicated clearly and effectively to all members of the council as well as the student body. Be it further resolved that the MSU Denver Student Government the Student Advocacy Council is responsible for regularly evaluating the effectiveness of this amendment and making any necessary adjustments to ensure that the council is always best equipped to serve the needs of the student body. Thank you, Paul. We're going to open it up to the floor for discussion. We have me first. Um, and then Mike. Um, so I want to say that I do not necessarily agree with our bylaws that it should be a requirement to be 24 hours in advance. But for me personally, um, I think it's more of a polite thing to do. Um, I know for myself that if um, a resolution is not submitted 24 hours ahead of time, there's a good chance I'm not going to read it. And if I don't read it, I'm not going to vote on it. That's what I have to say. Thank you. On to Mike. Hello, Taylor. Um, I completely agree with you, actually. I think it's like, I don't, I think it's tough, especially like the m Friday morning I have to read in a resolution that's been brought to me less than 24 hours in advance. I find it just common courtesy for us to kind of have our stuff out there beforehand. I mean, it gives us time to research. Um, make our own kind of informed decisions. This seems like it's kind of rushing that vote um, right away. And I think it's just more polite thing to do for us, the counselors, to have that notice and time to review and personally prepare themselves. So I'll say that. Thank you, Mike. On to Chad, then Paul. Um, I, I'm i not in support of this uh, resolution. I do believe that 24 hours is uh, in my opinion, even still a short time frame for people to familiarize themselves with how complex some of our resolutions and amendments can be. Um, and I, I look back to last semester before the Constitution outlined this, that um, there were plenty of resolutions that were brought to the to the meeting in a moment, and we all had to vote on it immediately. Um, and it, it felt like it was uh, it was certainly being rushed, and I also look back to the food pantry resolution, which caused a lot of uh, discourse in our office and in our meeting. Um, and the only reason that a good majority of the council knew about it is because there were individuals sharing the resolution with other individuals, not not one individual that wrote it sharing it with the entire council. Um, so I think that this is an absolute minimum requirement for resolutions. Thanks, Chad. On the poll. So I wanted to speak for some of my experience in other bodies that use the this kind of, you know, have resolutions and vote on things, use Robert's Rules Order. And in every single one of them except this body, we can bring business to the floor. Like they're in some, they're called napkin resolutions. I've been to conventions where we where we they're discouraged in the same candor that you guys are talking about, right? It's like, hey, this is frustrating. I don't get the chance to read it. I sometimes I feel like it's been sprung on me. And that's why I included that portion in the end that said we had we we strongly uh, suggest sending it in early, you know, at least 24 hours early for resolutions. This is to enable us to do in the moment work if we need to, right? Of course, we want to discourage it, be respectful of all one another. But I want to point to a few examples of in the moment work that's worked just fine, right? We've had motions in this committee to endorse things, right? Brought up, sprung in the moment, right? Where we hear the proposal. We hear it read. Every, almost every single resolution we've ever had, we've read it in person. So we've all had a chance to, to hear it, to think about it, to discuss it. Um, and while it might be difficult to do that in the moment, I think that's the kind of challenge we should be ready to take up for the students if we have an urgent issue. Like if an issue came up today, right? An issue that was like fresh on my desk or something, and I was, or we, really wanted to do something about it, we need to be able to. And that's the goal of this resolution. It's not to hit everybody upside the head with all my resolutions in the last minute. I promise. The goal here is to enable us to do some some work in the moment, just like we just like we did with the name tags, uh, just like we did with supporting the housing resolution and the crafting of it, um, just like we have with many motions here, just like we do with friendly amendments. Like a friendly amendment doesn't isn't sent in 24 hours ahead of time, and we can discuss it, consider it, and work on it. Um, I don't think it's as, as 
is as daunting an ask as is being portrayed. Thank you, Paul. Does anyone else have anything they would like to say about this or discuss? Alan? You know, vote on it. Okay. Second. Yeah. We have a call to question and a second, so we will now begin the voting process. Dan? Yes. Chad? No. Taylor, yes. Stephanie? No. Naomi? Abstain. Paul? Yes. Mike? No. Gabe? Abstain. Abstain. Okay. Let's let's look this over real quick. So it it is a deadlock yes and no, uh, three and three, so it fails. This needed a two thirds vote to amend the constitution. Okay. Um, also, I wanted to mention if there's a tie, isn't it? Doesn't it automatically lose normally? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> Um, okay, this concludes all of our business. Um, our guest. We do have a guest, and I believe our guest has something they would like to say. Athena? Hello? Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold um hold on just a minute. I I actually have a question about um I'm filling out a uh, campus uh campus events request form through the Roadrunner link, and it's called um reparations in the language arts. And one of my presenters was asking for compensation for their indigenous wisdom. And I was wondering what people normally pay the presenters because um, I, I know you guys have like done these events before and this is the first time that I've really put something like this together alone. So I was wondering how much you guys pay your um, presenters normally when you uh, put that into a budget. Um, so is I'm this, sorry, I was, um, oh no, you're fine. Um, don't be sorry. Uh, so you're, tr so let me get this straight. You're trying to hire an indigenous person to come speak on language reparations. Is that right? Um, yes, I, I already have a speaker on right now, but, um, they're asking for compensation. So I was just wondering how much you guys usually compensate. Okay, so that is, I mean, so when we do, when we hire our MCs for the powwow and we hire people to come do like prayer songs and things like that, um, there's like, it depends per like tradition and tribe, but generally you wanna like first offer like tobacco and sage or something that is like sacred to them. That's just like the norm for us in our community um, and the people we've been offering to. Um, and then generally they will give you a set fee and then you just pay that fee. Um, so our EMCs um, generally give us like um, what their standard is. And then depending on like the events or how long they're going to be performing for, um, they give us their rate. So you ask them what their rate is and then you all have like a negotiation ses session with them. So say it's like something too expensive, like. 5,000 just to, you know, give you that range right there. Um, if it's too much, then you like ask them, okay, well, this is what our budget is. We would really, you know, just express that gratitude and then ask them if they can meet you in the middle somewhere. Um, so it's really just kind of about negotiation and then honoring them as people and their work. Um, and that's why you want to ask them generally what their going rate is. Um, so, and, and then obviously go off of what your budget is and what you can afford. And if you don't have a budget, um, I would kind of start there then and see if you can get a budget outline and then go to them and ask them what they what their rate is and then tell them what your budget is and then what you can afford. Um, and then maybe they can help, you know, price something out for you that is um, reasonable. Awesome. Thank you so much for getting back to me about that. Um, I will be sure to construct this uh, email back to them asking for their rate and then be able to construct a proper budget. Thank you for your help. Um, Athena, I have 
a little bit more information. It sounds like this okay. is an event that you're putting on through an MSU Denver club. Is that correct? Yeah, it'll be through the debate club because it's part of the debate class and um, the debate professor. So even though I'm not exclusively a part of the club, I am part of the course and um, they're the advisor for my degree. And I'm also part of the metro sphere and plan on integrating some of the things in the metro sphere. Um, but yeah, I'm basically asking for it through the debate and the metro sphere at the same time. So oh, um, I know that I used to do some of this, the org consultant stuff. Um, I'm going to email you, uh, Caden Pezos and uh, Amy Romero, uh, their contact info to help you with this, uh, with these items. Um, and I'm pretty sure in the organization's uh, bylaws and outlines, it says that you cannot pay, big quotes like pay, a uh, guest speaker, but you can provide honorariums, but I'm not sure what the honorariums are limited to. So um, Caden and Amy will be able to answer those questions for you. Thank you. Good. Oh, I just wanted to quickly mention, um, Athena, thank you so much for the question. It's a good one. I just wanted to say the debate program is unique um, on our campus. It's not just a student org, but they're also nestled under the communications department, as you may already know. So I would I would encourage you also when you're when you're kind of coming up with what what this budget really is, um, that you fire something by the communications department, because I remember they were the biggest contributor um, financially to the support that the debate team had. Um, and without it, they would have, you know, we, we wouldn't have survived. But um, so that's a good place to uh, stop by, I think. OK, I appreciate it. And then uh, one more thing. So um, we've we've done, like I said in the past, the honorariums before. Um, and thank you, Chad, for bringing up that language because it is very important. So when you ask them, um, I wouldn't say necessarily what their going rate is, but ask them maybe like what their worth is worth to them. So that way you can then develop um, a worthy honorarium to compensate them for. Um, and I would kind of try to use more of that language just to make sure that we're you're hitting all the legal spots and when it comes to this um navigating the space for making sure you're compensating them correctly and appropriately thank you okay okay thus concludes our meeting for the week have a wonderful weekend everyone great advocacy today